Well, um, figures uh, for, for themselves. 63% um, of the GDP of each country are produced in cities whenever uh, the level of urbanization of this country reaches 30%. So it is very critical that uh, any development of our countries is associated, correlated to the growth of cities. And unfortunately, many of our decision makers don't see this link and they overstate the bad side of urbanization and not enough the opportunities is offered for development. the challenges we have to face is the speed of urbanization, uh, the pace in which this happens. Uh, it took almost a uh, uh, hundred years for uh, a city like uh, London to become a millionaire. It took less than 20 years for a city like Newark Church to become a millionaire. So the pace is so, so huge and uh, that uh, you, don't, you don't have the capacity to cope with those, this kind of speed. And consequently, cities are uh, built by the city dwellers themselves and uh, the cities are not planned enough ahead. So because of this addition of areas uh, of uh, neighborhood to over neighborhood, you have a sprawl on the, in, in all the African cities. And this sprawl is a, a, a huge hurdle into sustainable cities and to uh, the capacity to deal with uh, uh, the sustainable, sustainability requirement in terms of uh, 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 the footprint on the environment. Uh, another issue is that um, most of our cities are populated with young people and uh, these young people need jobs. We know for sure that uh, uh, the level of uh, uh, work uh, workers that will enter the, the uh, work market uh, will triple between now and 2050. Uh, it means that we will have to uh, put into, into job uh, around one billion people more than we have today. And uh, we also know that 80% uh, of our people earn less than $4 a month. So it is, it is very critical for cities to uh, create jobs, to create decent jobs that can allow people to earn their, their living. Otherwise, it is uh, the uh, tendency to have all our citizens, the bulk of our citizens, into what they call informal sector, which I call the popular uh, economy, uh, will then be only uh, uh, a way to address poverty, but not really to develop our cities. I think we need to have a, a change in mindset, a change in, uh, of paradigm. Uh, development has been conceived by our, our national government and many researchers as a capacity to have your fair, uh, your fair place uh, in the world economy. And the connection to the world market was of essence. Now uh, that people see uh, that the world market is not offering uh, that much opportunities that people have imagined before, uh, they, there is another understanding of uh, uh, economic transformation and the role of the economy. 
is to improve the living condition of the people where they live. Uh, in that sense, uh, the cities become a center of transformation and of opportunities. And you know the, the five functions of a city that allow for this transformation are simple. And they are uh, uh, places for businesses and places for activities in the city. We have five functions, which is feeding the city, the first one, building the city, the second one, uh, servicing the city, the third one, uh, uh, maintaining the city, the fourth, and administrating the city or managing the city, the fifth. Around these five functions, you have a lot of possibilities, a lot of opportunities that, we, that can be tapped into. So you need to go back to the basics and have this function as key drivers of your urban transformation and your economic transformation. You have two uh, conceptual frameworks here. Uh, when you, s you say uh, cities uh, should deliver services, you, that can mean cities to provide directly these services, or that can mean cities organizing for these services to be provided. And this is, I think, the way to go to put the partnership approach at the center of service delivery so that those who are uh, skilled, be it at the level of the communities or be it at the level of the private sector, partner with uh, uh, the city to deliver the services. And partnership is key. But partnership has to consider two main issues, the continuity and the quality of services and the affordability of services. Because if partnership means uh, uh, bringing the private sector, caring about the, uh, um, the uh, competitiveness of the private sector, but not about the affordability for the normal people to access the service, you are creating a dual city. And uh, we want inclusive cities. You know, there is um, a lot of reflection around the role of cities in development. A lot of questions. Most of the decision makers in Africa seem to be ashamed that their cities are pale copies of what we call cities in, West, in the Western world and in America and in Europe. And what we want to build is the equivalent of these cities of Europe without the uh, uh, surrounding economy, without the, the, the economy that can bear this kind of cities. And we, we some of the, the, the questions raised around how do we intend to do if we copy Dubai on the, the Congo or Dubai on, in uh, the, the coastal of Nigeria, what does it mean for the normal people in these countries? So <clears throat> we need to rethink uh, our cities. And uh, rethinking the cities uh, means putting the head together, having researchers coming with uh, a comprehensive understanding of the dynamic of African cities, and uh, bringing a new narrative on African cities. And this narrative should not be, <coughs> let's say, um, uh, a narrative of a uh, uh, romantical uh, uh, kind of, but uh, realistic in terms of saying that an African city is not a European city, and that uh, a, a city should be embedded in its society. So it, we need that we reconsider the way we see cities. This is the first issue. The second issue is that we need to rethink the model of uh, uh, bringing services to the people. 
I don't, I don't know uh, how we can tell a citizen in Kinshasa that there will be a, a network of sewage network, centralized sewage network, that will go throughout the city which extension is the surface of Lebanon. So we need new solutions because uh, the solution that was uh, uh, put in place based on the experience of density are not, uh, uh, cannot be applied for cities like ours where uh, the density is lower. So we need more decentralized solution access to services. And this decentralized solution should not uh, be uh, adopted at the expense of the quality of services and the, uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the quality of norms in terms of uh, health, uh, uh, sanitation, and so on. So you, you need to uh, have research on, uh, with the universities to also have a new way of uh, 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 delivering services uh, according to the, the kind of cities we have at hand. And finally, we need, we need also to have a different institutional setting to run our cities. Uh, Professor Mabogunje, uh, a Nigerian researcher, said that uh, uh, our cities sit on a very structured social network with very weak governance system. So how can we take advantage of our social network to build stronger governance system? How do we ally, make uh, the, this social traditional system that uh, is uh, really uh, embedded in our society with the new modern state uh, systems that uh, uh, bring about the democratic uh, logic into our societies. The first one is uh, the, the, what role the, 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 the Pan-African uh, institution can play uh, on, on the continent. The first is to convince that uh, uh, cities and cities growth is not uh, uh, an illness. Uh, I think many people think that uh, uh, going to cities means uh, that we are, we, this is the consequence of maldevelopment. This is not true. Uh, uh, we should accept once for all that cities can be engine of growth. And uh, uh, we should accept once for all that uh, uh, the uh, places are important to uh, improve the attractiveness of our continent. And we should accept that our continent will be united only when the first people, first authorities in charge of managing the, life, the living condition of the people can meet, exchange, share views, to unite this continent. So we, we, our, our, uh, our um, uh, first uh, advice for uh, the decision makers in, on this continent is to have a, a summit of head of state on cities. And uh, since uh, 2063, our head of state meet twice a year. And uh, we don't see uh, our local governments, leaders, cities leaders, meeting that regularly. And we need, if we want to build this continent, we have to connect the dots where people are living. And this is only the only way our continent will be united. First of all, I don't like this word of informal, because when 
60, 70, 80 percent practice in a city uh, uh, have a behavior, uh, an economic activity. You don't call it informal. We call it popular. And uh, you know, words matter. Uh, when you go in New York and you find a Sushan boy, he's called an entrepreneur. The same in Johannesburg, called informal sector. We don't know why. They earn a living, some of them pay taxes, and what explains this difference of perception? Otherwise that we undermine our own, own people. So uh, please uh, avoid this informal, use of this informal uh, sector. Uh, I'm, I'm against that. The city has a track record of being organized every three years since 1998. It means something. Number two, it is at the three cities that people realized that the local government movement has been divided following colonial languages and that this divide should be, uh, should be addressed. And this is why the local government throughout the continent came together to create what we call now the United Cities and Local Government of Africa. So a Free Cities Summit is a place where we want to reflect how we best serve the unity and integration of this continent. And uh, a Free Cities in Johannesburg takes place at a moment when the African Union is challenging the continent to have a vision, a 2063 vision for Africa, the Africa we want. So uh, Johannesburg will be a rallying point to start anew the Africa we want from the local level. And this is why the summit has labeled itself uh, the contribution of local government uh, uh, to the Agenda 2063, and it is called uh, Shaping the Future of Africa with the People. So for us, Johannesburg will be a new beginning. New beginning because we will set foundation to the Vision 2063, so that it's not stay, it doesn't stay at the level of only the national state, but it goes down to do grassroots.